In this presentation, we will continue on with our statement of cash flows. We're now going to enter the final adjustments that we will need to finalize the statement of cash flows to bring those last few numbers to the correct balances. In order to do that, we're going to use this information. We've got our comparative balance sheet. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it our income statement and additional information we put together most of our information so far with the comparative balance sheet which we made into a worksheet now we're going to use some of these other resources the income statement the additional resources to make those final adjustments those fine tunings that are needed to get those a few numbers that we have left and noted into balance and this is going to be part of the normal practice where once we get this information set up we can then make some comparisons such as net income does it tie out such as depreciation does it tie out on the cash flow statement to what we see here on the income statement then we can have this other information which will be given in book problems in practice of course we'll just go to the general ledger and we'll get this information in a book problem we don't want to give all the detail of a general ledger or just when we're going over an example so we have to just kind of give this other information in practice we go through the GL and we can see that information. Then we'll pull any documents we need, including uh, if we purchased the equipment and we took a loan out or any of that kind of stuff. We'll purchase that, we'll pull that out. We'll talk a little bit about that process as we go through here. So now what we wanna do is look through these journal entries related to this additional information. And if we think about what we've had so far, we noted that there's gonna be a couple areas we need to go back to and fix. One, we noted that, that net income didn't tie out to the to the income statement we noted that depreciation didn't tie out and we noted that the uh, equipment that we put on the books probably something more happened that's always something we need to go back to and we noted that the uh, notes payable is probably something more to it than uh, just taking the difference between notes payable it could be more activity in practice we would look at the gl again here they're just going to give us that more activity and we're going to try to figure out Okay, what types of journal entries is this added activity given re related to? Now, obviously, if they're giving this information in like a, a book type problem, then we're gonna, it's useful just to go through that and think about it. Okay, what is the journal entry related to these? In practice, we would always pretty much do this for a cash flow statement for the equipment account and uh, the loan account. If there's any activity, we would naturally go through there, figure out the few transactions related to it, and what the journal entries would be and note that these types of accounts don't have a lot of activity so it shouldn't be too difficult to do that meaning we're not going to buy equipment every day it's not like inventory so whatever activity is there we, there should be fairly few of it and we can figure out what happened and make these types of adjustments as needed we're going to start here with e because that's actually going to be a smaller journal entry so that's where we will start we'll pick off that one first then move from there it says we declared and paid cash dividends of 53,600. So anytime we get this added information, I would think about the journal entries related to them and then go, we'll go back to our worksheet and say, okay, what are we gonna do with our cash flow statement based on this information? So if we declared and paid cash dividends, we could think of that as two journal entries where we declare the dividend, have a payable, and then we pay it. But if we combine those two out, if they both happen in the same time period, then in essence, we had retained earnings and cash. In other words, cash went down, we paid cash. The debit's gonna to go to retained earnings, bringing down retained earnings. So, and this is similar to like if a, a withdrawal for a partnership or a sole proprietor. So we gave money from the company to the owners in the form of dividends, cash went down, and we debited the uh, equity account, in this case, retained earnings for a corporation. So what does that do? If we think about that journal entry, what, what are we gonna to do to our cash flow statement? Well. On the cash flow statement, we can think, well, net income is, is going to be affected here on, on because of this retained earnings. Why? Because re remember when we made this net income, wh what is it from? 
It's from the difference in our worksheet between the retained earnings. So we made the assumption, we said, okay, we didn't pull this from the income statement. We said, what would it be represented as on the difference between the balance sheet accounts? And typically it would be the difference in retained earnings because we closed out the retained earnings to, or the net income to retained earnings. So the major difference between retained earnings between two accounting periods should be net income. And that's what we used here. We noted that it wasn't the amount that's on the income statement and said, hey, we're gonna go back and fix that. Now we're gonna go fix that. We're gonna say, okay, uh, net income is one of those areas that this hopefully will bring us now in balance with the income statement. But there's gotta be something else happening here because we're already where we want to be. So there's got we gotta do something equal and opposite, kind of like a journal entry somewhere else. So note, I set this up kind of like a journal entry where we're increasing and decreasing. If we do something to net income here to make it correct, then the other side we can put here to cash dividend, cash uh, paid for dividends. So that's gonna be down here in the financing. So we paid cash for dividends. That's what happened here. So we're gonna make net income correct basically. And then we're going to post the difference here to uh, cash paid for dividends. Note that if we didn't do it this way, so let's see what that happens. If, if we do that, then we're going to say, okay, here's net income went from 104,500. I'm kind of putting this like as if it's an adjusting worksheet for adjustments in terms of uh, adjusting entries. And here's our ending adjusted cash flow. The other side of it's going to go down here. And that of course should keep us in balance. So we're not talking about debits and credits, but we're using kind of a similar system. We're saying, hey, we, we tied out to the 61,900 already using the numbers that we get from our worksheet. If we make any adjustments, we wanna do it systematically. We wanna say, okay, if we're gonna adjust net income to what is on the income statement, hopefully, then we also wanna adjust something else so that that difference that we got from the difference in retained earnings is still there. If we did not do it this way, in other words, if we took this number, which is the amount on the income statement, it's working, here's the income statement, here's this number, that's the number we wanted. If we started out just pulling this number and saying that's going to be our first number that we work with and our first number that we're working with is not on our worksheet that we're using then it's very likely that we wouldn't understand what what the differences are be able to figure out why we're not in balance if we use this number which is not net income but then go through this whole process then we can now figure it out in a systematic way and note also that uh, we have to do this whole thing basically to have the space down here to have it built out to be able to break this number out between the two so now we can go down here and say okay the other side of it's going to go to cash uh, paid for dividends and it's going to be a financing activity and that'll put us back in balance so cash went out because we paid it for dividends it's financing because we're dealing with the owner it's not it's not a, a income statement activity so it's not in the operating activities we didn't buy anything for the company so it's not in the investing activities we're dealing with financing the company and paying back the owner Therefore, it's in financing. So that's going to be our first adjustment that we'll have. And that, of course, makes net income tie out. So that worked. So that looks good. Now we're going to do our next adjustment. And we're going to say that uh, we're going to have the sold, sold the equipment. We sold the equipment and it says we received uh, 26050 So if we think about the journal entry first and then kind of think about what we're going to do in terms of increases and decreases to our cash statement, we can say, okay, the cash went up, equipment must have gone down, and then the accumulated depreciation is gonna be a debit. Because remember, it's on the books as a credit. We have to debit it to make it go away. The difference then is gonna be 2,100, and that's gonna be a loss. So that's what we need to be in balance, that's the plug. So if we took this plus this minus this, we'd need 2,100 in order to remain in balance. So we know that this is gonna be a loss. We can think of it a couple different ways. One, it's a debit, and that's kind of like an expense. Expenses are debit balance accounts, therefore it's probably a loss, not a gain. And two, if we looked at the book value, which would be the 51,000 minus the 22,850, uh, that, uh, that would be greater than the cash we got, and therefore it's a loss. So that's why we're gonna name it a loss here. And then we, that's not the only thing that happened to equipment though. So notice the equipment of course is more messy than we would just assume, like we just got cash and sold the equipment. So the other side of this is that um, uh, we bought equipment and how would we know this? You might be asking, we would look at the GL, we'd look at the two accounts that made the difference up in the general ledger 
then we would find the journal entries related to it and the documents possibly for those purchases. So then the equipment, it went up by 113,250 cash. We paid 43,250 and we financed it 70,000. So that's common because we buy an equipment and we didn't have the cash for it. It's common to finance the equipment. So we have this debt now. So these two then are going to, this is where the most complicated component is of these journal entries of these types of cash flow statements generally to figure out the equipment because it, notice all these accounts it's, a, it's affecting. Now, if you do everything up to this point, the way we've looked at it, even if you can't figure out this last step, if it's a book problem, you will have picked up a lot of points. If it's a problem in practice, you'll be able to go to your supervisor or whoever and say, look, I, I know exactly what the difference is. I know exactly what's going on. I know exactly how this thing ties out and it has to do with equipment. And you can start from there and, and not have to start the whole thing over again. That's, that's the point of this process. Now, our goal now is to take these journal entries and look at our cash flow and try to say, okay, how are we going to apply these in terms of an increase and decrease, convert this into kind of like an increase decrease to our cash flow accounts so that we're still in balance. So we're going to use those same kind of balancing concept to adjust these out so that we're still in balance here. So whatever we do with these journal entries, we got to find a home for them in kind of like an increase and decrease mode so that we're still in balance. That's going to be our goal. Now this again a little bit difficult a little bit more difficult to do this now we noted that we saw when we built this cash flow that depreciation was not right because it didn't match what was on the income statement we note that we saw a sale a loss on the income statement and we didn't put the number here so there's probably something there and we noted that um, cash paid for equipment was probably too simplistic when we put that on there and we noted that the uh, cash paid for the long-term note again probably too too simplistic so we noted that all these things uh, could have more detail to it however the, because they're all tied together with each other the equipment the loan it would have been very difficult for us to do that as we construct so it's better for us to put these numbers there and now go back to it and say okay the, here's the puzzle we've got these journal entries and we we have to fix these accounts now there's a couple things we know we know what the loss is because it's on the income statement and we know what the depreciation is because it's on the income statement. And now we know uh, these journal entries. So let's take this information and, and try to see how we can adjust these accounts. So first, the depreciation. Uh, we're going to say we're adjusted depreciation. And that's going to be basically this number we're picking up. And we can verify that by saying, okay, if we adjust the depreciation, if we increase the depreciation by 15750 will that come out to the depreciation on the income statement? And we'll see that it will. We'll have to check that. And then we're going to say that the cash received from equipment, we're going to basically say that that's coming from this account. Now, that might not be as intuitive. We're going to say, well, why is that? Well, this is debiting cash, and we, that's our cash flow statement over here, and we just need to know where did that cash come from. That's, we're looking at cash flow here. Well, that cash flow came from equipment that, uh, that we sold. So, And then we're going to ask ourselves, well, is that operating, investing, or financing? It's not going to be operating because it's not really an income statement account. This account's income statement, but the bulk of this isn't really an income statement transaction. Really, it has to do with us buying or selling an asset, which is an investing activity. So we're going to be dealing with cash received. We're going to say it's an investing activity. We sold uh, property, plant, and equipment. Anytime we deal with property, plant, and equipment, uh, it's typically going to be dealing investing activity when we're working with a cash flow statement. And then we got cash paid for the purchase of equipment. That's going to be uh, the 51 here. So the 51, and so why would that be? Well, uh, cash paid for the purchase is where we put the entire thing, the, the entire difference between, that's really a result of kind of these two journal entries. So we're breaking this out in a sense uh, to its components now. So that's going to be, that's why this has got to be a component and it's got to go down. And then we've got the loss. And the loss is something we can see here. We knew it was on the income statement. So we're going to pick up that loss and put it here. So of these, you can probably figure these out. And then you got to go, okay, that's, this is where the difference is going to go to because that's where we put everything to. So that's, that's the other side of it. And then we've got this journal entry. Now, the major thing with this journal entry is that we've, we've got this loan, this financing amount here. So the financing amount is going to be the issue because the financing amount is not cash related. So we're going to be dealing with the 70,000. So we're going to say that uh, cash paid for long-term note here 
is going to have to be adjusted because that's going to be uh, the, the note payable. The other side of it's going to go to cash paid for the purchase of equipment, which is where we put everything. That's the other side of this transaction. So you might want to spend some time with something like, like these uh, journal entries and try to figure out why that, uh, you know, uh, mull, mull it over a few times. If we were to post this out then, in terms of this kind of increase and decrease, not really a journal entry, but a similar kind of concept to our worksheet, we're going to say, okay, here's where we were at before. We're in balance. This matches what's on our balance sheet. We need to do increases and decreases here in such a way that we don't affect the bottom line. So they have to equal in some way. So if we do our adjustments that we had, we're going to say depreciation. We'll record that gets us to 38. So it was at 15,750 plus 22,850 brings us to 38,6. The loss, we didn't have one before. It's going to go up by 2,100 to 2,100. We had uh, the cash paid for equipment was at 62,250. There were two transactions. So this is the net of those two transactions, bringing us to 43,250. Uh, and then we had the cash received uh, from the sale of equipment, 2650, bringing us to 2650. And then we have the cash paid for long-term debt. That kind of flipped this one. This, we would have thought it was a receivable and now it flipped it 70,000 paid. So now it's really paid, right? 47,500. So this is gonna be the activity we have. Now, if we look at all that, then here's our adjustments we just had. They add up to zero. The additions and the subtractions add up to zero. So we end up in the same spot is the, is the point. So we got to this amount by doing a simplified method, just looking for the differences in our two in our balance sheet accounts so that we know we tied out. Then we went back and looked at those problem cases and figured out our uh, ending numbers, made these adjustments in such a way that they're gonna be in balance so that we're still in balance here. And now we can tie out these numbers. We can say, does net income work? Does depreciation work? Well, if we go here, Net income, 158,100. Depreciation, 38,600. Should be on the income statement. So it looks like those are gonna be, gonna be good. And of course, when we go to the, to the loans, we wanna be able to say, does that tie out to actual loan documents that we got when we look at, at the GL, the amount we borrowed in a short-term loan, uh, in this case, uh, cash paid on long-term notes, uh, does that add up to, to, the, to the cash we paid when we finance the uh, equipment that, uh, or the or the cash we actually paid on the notes, and then cash received uh, from issuing stock, uh, 45, and the dividends, we can see that uh, we have uh, some of the additional information. We check these amounts on here on the income statement. Then we have uh, it says that uh, we borrowed short term loan 5,000. That looks good. Uh, paid to reduce the long the the long term loan 47,500. And that now 47,500 is where we're at there. So that's going to be another one of our major kind of check figures uh, to look through that. So it looks like everything ties out. Now we're going to take this and we're just basically going to, going to eliminate the adjustments and, and be left with just this. So we're just going to say, okay, now we can hide this information and be left with our ending numbers, which would look like something like this. So again, this is more of a kind of a worksheet because we could go through here and fix up and trim up the terminology uh, and whatnot, but that's a kind of a worksheet process that can get us through this through this process in such a way that we can do it in a step-by-step -step basis. And the cash flow statement is similar to like a, a balance sheet where we, when we get to the end of it, uh, oftentimes it's not in balance and no one knows how to fix it except to start all over again. Well, this process will hopefully give us a process that we can not have to start all over again and, and have some check figures along the way.